This is DLFM Online. Radio Station Chicago. Dimensión Latina FM. Radio TV. Baja nuestra aplicación a través de tu iPhone o Android. Búscanos como Dime la FM. Búscanos en TuneIn Radio como Dimensión Latina FM y visita nuestra página web dimelafm.com. of love. My name is Elsa Prado and I have a very special program today because I have a very special friend on. Uh, our guest today has gone through tremendous rebirth and is the uh, uh, just and I can't even I, I don't even know the words to use uh, the survival that uh, my guest Yolanda Carter has undergone and all the many different things that she has experienced, uh, you know, uh, since this whole situation happened to her, uh, being the victim of, of domestic violence. But now we have a very brave and courageous survivor. She's now an advocate for women survivors and, empower, and a very empowering woman, empowering speaker. Um, I've known her for many years now, but I cannot tell you enough of how many surgeries she has undergone after her boyfriend struck her with a hammer, almost leaving her for dead in a pool of blood. Welcome to Wings of Love, Yolanda. Thank you for being here. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to be on your platform on today, Elsa. Uh, it's truly an honor. Well, um, who I am, I am Yolanda Carter. I am an advocate. I'm an author, a speaker. Advocate, first of all, I'm a mother of first five of, beautiful yes. adult children, yes. born and raised on the south side of Chicago, um, and just lived a normal life as I was, you know, just until that home. day, right? until that Absolutely. day came and your whole entire life was turned upside down. Absolutely. It was Tell our audience a little bit about what happened so they get a better picture. And I think knowing that we are at the tail end of uh, Women's History Month, this is something that many women experience. Many women have survival stories as part of their history. And many women like you, uh, Thank God your son came, yes. you know, at yes. that very particular moment. But please yes. tell us um, a little bit so that the people that don't know you, they get a better idea. They get a glimpse of who Yolanda Carter is and what happened that day. Okay, yeah. Uh, Yolanda Carter is a mother that um, was a, became, that became a victim of domestic violence. Go ahead and speak just a little bit louder so we can hear you better. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, yes. It's, it's just your soft spoken right now. <laughs> okay, well, I became a victim of domestic violence not um, only when I was um, at my age now. Uh, it started off at my earlier years. I was one in, say, 19 years of age when the initial domestic violence started, which it wasn't called domestic violence at that time. She it was wasn't. called lover's quarrel. It was, you know, just like if your partner abused you, beat you or whatever, they'll have them take a walk and then come back when you cool off. That was your cool off moment. And then you just go back to normal routine, like it's nothing ever happened. But right. nowadays everything has changed and uh, it gets, it gotten a little bit more aggressively it's gotten a little bit more now they're taking lives of their uh, partners now so um myself yolanda 
was a, I am a mother of five beautiful adult children. March 22nd, 2016, that's the date my life had changed. And leading up to that time, I thought that I had this knight in shining armor. And so many of us, all of us, you know, a lot of us have that same thought process when it Certainly. comes down to your Prince Charming. Mm-hmm. So being, uh, you know, in, in denial, a lot of times we are in denial because we normalize so many things and it may look like, oh, it's not that bad. I got it under control. Oh, he said he's sorry. He won't do it again. So we go through that up and down rhythm and roll. And the forgiving the them and the forgive. Okay. Yes, forgive let's... Them. Very compassionate about their feelings. And you, you put them out and then you have a compassionate heart. Like, oh, wow, I'm, you know, I'm going to just go ahead and let him back in. And it was just a routine that that went over and over and over again. There was times when um, he decided that he wanted to throw my phone down the alley one time. He uh, threw my belongings. He, he threw alcohol on me. I mean, he did so many things that you could just say, you know what, you just want some attention. And you would think if a person is doing that to you, you would think like, okay, now these are the red flags. These are warning signs. But you don't really think about that because you just don't think that the person that you with is really that bad. It's just that, okay, they mad. We'll get through it. It's over with. And it's never an apology. It's just like when something happened, we cool off a few days and we go back to it like ain't nothing ever happened. And that's what we were doing. But when, um, I still can't tell you why my incident led up to be a violent crime. Exactly. I was just, it was a normal day. It was really a normal day. Um, before that, that weekend leading up to it, uh, he decided to leave and go out on, I would say, a bench. Right. And before that, I didn't even even hardly know that this man was even using any type of drugs. Because sometimes people can hide stuff like that really good. Right. They, 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 they don't want to. Right. Mm-hmm. They're good actors at times. Uh, very, very absolutely. good actors. You don't know what really is going on. Absolutely. So he didn't, I guess he didn't want to suffer to lose me. So it was like he left, but when it was time to come back, cause I went and took my son to school that day. And um, normally he would ask me to take him to work because we had a routine. I take him to work, I take my son to school and then I would go to work. And this was our routine every day and we come back. But for this day, it was a weekend, which was on a Friday. Me and my son, I picked my son up from school and I came in. But when it was time for him to come home, there was no call, no show. Mm. So I was like, oh, okay, then, well, that's the game you're going to play. I'm not worried because, you know, at that time, you know, after all the things that I have gone through with him, I was getting a little tired anyway. And I didn't even care at that point whether whatever he did or not. But I just decided that, okay, well, uh, the next day came, there was still no call, no show. I was like, okay, well, we're going to continue to keep on going. Then Sunday, there was, he called me like, I want to say seven o'clock PM that evening. Mm -hmm. And when he called me, I was like, yes, may I help you? And he was just saying, you know, well, actually, you know what? Go back. He didn't, he, I didn't even really give him a chance to even conversate with me because he was calling me back to back to back very very aggressively. He was very, um, you know, somebody that just acting like they crazy. They keep calling you and calling you and calling you. So I was like, I just hung up the phone. I didn't want to be bothered. And then I knew the next day was going to be Monday. I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I'm probably going to just wait till tomorrow and then I'll let him come back home. So I decided, I don't know if he was getting angry. He probably did get angry because I wasn't answering the phone and I wasn't giving him what he wanted. So he decided to wait till it was time for me to go get my son from school on a Monday. So he started calling me, I want to say like three o'clock that evening. 
Three o'clock that evening, I started getting calls from him. And that's when I was like, yes, may I help you? He was like, are you at home? I said, no, I'm not at home. So I decided to go pick up my son and then I dropped my son off. But little did I know, I did not know that he was watching me. He was already at the apartment, um, not you know where I could see him, but he's right. somewhere off in the cut. And when I dropped my son off, he seen me because my son, I didn't know all of this until after the story came out that right. he seen me drop my son off after him calling me, asking me questions. Oh, are you home? And you, if you seen that I wasn't home, why were you calling? I guess maybe he wanted to see if I was gonna trip up and lie or whatever. But no, my, my story was consistent. So mm -hmm. I decided to, I was going to get me and my son something to eat. We were hungry, so I dropped my son off. I went to the restaurant, cause I lived in Hyde Park at the time, you know, and there's right. all the restaurants around. So I went, proceeded to go get my son something to eat. And then I came back home. But something just told me to park my car around the corner. I don't know why. I can't even it's tell It's that gut talking to you, right? Yes, it had mm -hmm. to be. Because I did not know that, um, you know, why or the reason why I was parking my car around the corner. So I decided to park my car around the corner. And then I started uh, walking, proceeding to the building where I lived at. So by the time I got close to the building, I got by like where the garbage dumpster or whatever. And okay. it was a place like you can wedge yourself in the doorway. So as I was approaching that doorway, he came out on me and I froze. And I was, I was kind of spooked. So that's when he was saying, oh, I thought you were gone. I'm like, okay, I'm back now. And you know, he, he didn't have any keys to get in my house. So um, he had to come in when I came in. So I was opening that door and he started saying, oh, the doctor said I'm stressed out. And the first thing came to mind was that, is this man going to do something to me and use it as he got mental, you know, some, something right. happened to him or something. So I, was, I brushed it off. So he was talking to me upstairs. So he was like, oh, can I take a shower? And that was very strange to me because I'm like, why is he asking me, can he take a, sh I mean, a shower? So right. I was like, no, you can't take a shower. But really, you know, come on now. You, yeah. you was there in the house. Why don't you just don't take a shower? Mm -hmm. So he took a shower. He ended up asking, my son told me, he ended up asking me for the key card so he can go and wash his clothes downstairs. So I guess after all of that transpired and it was time, I want to say it was like 10 o'clock PM mm -hmm. that time. It was time for us to just wind it down. But right. when I went into the room, he was already sound asleep. I mean, knocked out sleep. So mm -hmm. I came out the room and I came back in the living room and I proceeded to watch whatever I was watching on TV, had my feet up and all that other stuff. So I decided it was, you know, I had to get up and go to work. I had to get up like five in the morning mm -hmm. and it was time for me to go to bed. So I decided to, you know, I had already took my shower and everything and uh, it was time for me to go to sleep, go to bed. Right. But I did go to bed. I, I went to bed. <laughs> I did that much. And uh, next thing I know, 5 a.m. in the morning, I'm being shooken by my son and the paramedics and police and all the, you know, fireworks, you know, fire people. Yes, and, the fire department, of course. Yes. And I was asking, I'm, li I'm hearing faint sounds and you know, it was just so much going on and I, I didn't know what was going on. And waking up, bleeding out of my mouth, bleeding out of my nose. And when I look over in the bed, it was my brain matter in the bed with me. Right. And I just... asked him, I, I said, what happened to me? And that's when my baby said, mama, he beat you with a hammer. And the first thing I was saying was, why, how could somebody, do something right. like what that. What kind of rage causes somebody to beat somebody else with a hammer? Yes. And I, I couldn't I couldn't wrap it around my brain. All I knew is that I wanted to live. So I I, I was I was so confused about everything that was going on and I'm listening to 
the one of the uh, officers, he was very hysterical. And he was like, oh my God, oh my God, she's alive, she's alive. You know, because they thought I was dead. Well, and he probably left you for dead. He did. He I mean, when you beat dead. somebody with a hammer in, in, in the head and the yeah. eyes and the, you know, the, the yeah. face and, and, you know, that was with intent to kill. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? That's intent to kill. That's not like, mm-hmm. let, let, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, upset with Yolanda. Let me just, right. you know, do a little so something actually, to her. Actually, what he did was he... I was laying on, you know, my head was on the right. I was laying on the the left side of my head. So he mm-hmm. got me all on the right side. And because all of this was, um, the, my cranium and everything was crushed, it broke everything on the left side. Right. So it, cr- it broke up. All of my facial bones were broken and shattered all in pieces. And then they had to had no other choice but to remove my eye because it was right. too badly damaged. Mm-hmm. So after the initial shock of all this and them having to take my eye out and and my daughter, when she made it to the hospital, see normally it was like her husband, he'll be like, Oh, it's not that bad or whatever. And when he went in there, he told her, she said, Is it bad? Because she was like afraid to go of in. Of course. Yes. And to see me like that, and she, her husband was like, it's bad, it's bad. And, you know, I felt like what really happened? I was just trying to wrap my head around it, but I was also, I was trying to survive. Exactly I, right. I, I wanted to survive. So I wasn't even worried about what happened. We about mm-hmm. we're worried about that later. And I just I, I took that and I and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to think because my thought process was just, just like basically I'm in survival mode right at this moment. Well sure, yes. And uh, all everything else is gonna have to wait. Whatever it is, what I'm gonna think and how I'm gonna think, whatever it is, I didn't know what to do. I was lost. So after that, I was in uh, t- intensive care, and um, they they put me. They they had to do a lot of extensive work to me. I had to in total thirteen reconstructive surgeries. Thirteen already. Wow. The last and final surgery was before the new year, which was November tenth, I believe. November. I think it was the 5th of November just passed was my last and final surgery. Right. And, you know, through the surgeries and all the emotions that you have and, you know, the sadness, because I get sad. I get sad. Do you think it like gave you depression at certain points? You know, just like one surgery after the other. And, you know, your life was totally changed forever, you know? It, it, it really does, uh, Elsa. Um, just thinking about it makes me want to cry now. Oh, I know. But... I'm, I'm like ready to cry here with you. I mean, I just <laughs> like the to have to be reborn because that's basically you, what you had to do. You had to leave, you, you had to be reborn. Absolutely. And, you know, this program, do... this mm-hmm. program is for all of you women that literally had to be reborn after mm-hmm. a domestic situation like you lived there have been so many women that have had such horrific torture done to them it's just torture right and i would not wish no nothing like on anyone no and you know it's it's like how why i just always wanted to know why right I may not ever find out why he did why this or what you know why go to that length right and I know that I'm not a bad person no I don't do anything to hurt no one and for somebody to do something like that to me that was just heart wrenching because you try to figure it out you you worry like what did I do right what did I do to deserve this and and I yes. think that all women that experience domestic violence at some point we all think the same thing it's like what on earth you know what did i do 
Mm -hmm. I mean, to get to these levels, you just wonder, why do I, you know, why are you destroying me? Yeah. And uh, it's just um, the emotional toll. Tell us a little bit about what that emotional toll takes on, not, you know, not only you, on you physically, but, uh, you know, the detriment yeah, sure. that it has. Like you had to figure out, to, you know, you had to start over, like yes, from absolutely. scratch. You Absolutely. had to start from scratch, literally, Absolutely. and you had to become a whole new Yolanda, mm -hmm. like a whole new woman from yeah. the woman that you used to be. Absolutely. And you I also was... had to be a new mom. You, you, now mm -hmm. you're this this mom that you're like, oh, my God, my kids, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I had to learn how to, um, first of all, I had to learn how to walk all over again. Um, I had all that brain on. damage. Yes, I had to hold on to people when I walked because just think about it. If you put your hand over your head, your face, one one of your hands over your eyes, you're gonna be off balance. You're gonna yes, be, exactly. Oh. So I had to learn how to walk. Um, and still, right now to this day, if I'm going out, I have to hold on to people. Mm -hmm. I trip a lot. You know, it can be something that because I can't look straight and look down at the same time. So right. I, 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 I done tripped, almost broke my leg before. It, it's just a lot. And then being in the house by yourself, I had to get a first alert button. So that way, just if anything happens, I'm here by myself. I can, you know, get immediate attention. Um, you have to be able to, uh, oh, the fear, the fear of just the PTSD and fear that somebody's in always gonna do something to you. Yes. I was afraid of people. I didn't wanna go nowhere. I was just so traumatized, mm -hmm. just thinking something bad was gonna always happen. And, and and that just take you to a whole nother level because you wanna feel like, I wanna go back to some sense of normalcy. I wanna be normal again, but I will never, this is my new normal. I would right. never ever be the normal that I was born to be. But exactly. I am okay with my new normal because a lot of things that we go through anyway, we normalize it anyway. And right. it becomes something that is normal because either we watched it or either we done witnessed it or we done, you know, went through it. So that's why we have to make better choices um, women and men, because domestic violence yeah. is not applies just to men. men as well. Yes. Absolutely, and it's and it's happening to any age, color, gender, any anyone. Yeah, it knows Everyone, no color or all. race or gender or anything. I mean, it's across the board and uh, impacting everybody on absolutely. a daily basis. Can you how, imagine twenty? People how did per your minute. kids? How did your kids cope? Oh, with such God. a tragedy how did your kids like tell us a little bit about what it did to your family oh, especially your it's... boy i mean he was still yes. a young kid when he finds mom you know and, on yes. her deathbed bleeding to death yes so with my son that was the most hurtful traumatic experience you would ever want to go through um after the you know him finding me and by him being 17 they wouldn't even let him right. come up in the hospital and you know my daughter would tell me all he would do is sit in the um sit he would sit and he would just cry right he's already he was already a, a introvert standoffish person Mm -hmm. But it caused him to just sit there and just be numb and just, just cry. And, you know, he was angry. He was really angry. Of course. And why would you want to take, try to take my mom away from me? Right. And it was so hard for my daughters. I and mean, my daughter, actually, my daughter started having seizures after this happened because of the stress. The impact, and yeah. The, and yeah, so she had to end up having brain surgery last year. So it, it, it didn't really, my dad, oh my God, my dad, when it really initially happened, when they, and then the guy would kept calling them, asking them, was I okay? Am I alive? Because they had me as deceased. 
they had it um, when he checked, when they were, even when I would go to court, they had me as if I was deceased. Right. And the last time when I went to court, they was like, oh no, she's not deceased, she's alive. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, just the initial of him just calling my family, telling them, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I never meant to hurt her. You go get a hammer and you never meant to hurt me. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, How is there not intent? And, that, and that, that's the thing that is mind boggling to th- even think of something that drastic. You know, to grab a hammer to beat somebody, it is beyond the realm of comprehension. Yes, and, and it was, it's just hard. Um, Elsa, that's why I am now um, one of the voices of domestic violence. I wanted to use my experience so that women, men will understand the depth of the real truth about what domestic violence really is and what it really looks like. Exactly. We want to make sure that we talk about healthy relationships more so than anything and how we will respect because you can't love me unless you respect me. Exactly. And that's one thing that we have to understand that it takes communication. It takes a level of respect for one another. You have to respect each other. You can't mm-hmm. just like, oh, I love you, but what do you love about me? Right. What is it that you love? Oh, what I can do for you or what you can do for me? That's not mm-hmm. love. No. That's just for a person to just keep each other around for the benefits of just having you around because what you can right. do for me. When you respect me and you love me, you have to respect every aspect of what you what you mean when you say you love me. Right. So it, it, it's a it's a lot that we have to go through as women, but we also, like I said, men suffer in silence as well. And the th- the thing is, suffering in silence, it takes so much of a toll on people because we want sometimes we want you to really figure out what we're really going through without us really having to say it because right. of the shame, the embarrassment that go embarrassment that goes with you. You already know if you have a, a young lady, a friend of yours, and their movements are changing and their behaviors are changing, or they say, oh, I'm going out with my new boo or whatever, and then all of a sudden, they're not the life of the party anymore. They're not going anywhere. They're being controlled by their significant other, their time being clocked. So it's, it's, it's like a... I'm sorry, it looks like maybe the call dropped at some point. Somebody Allow us a moment. Me. There we go. <laughs> there we go. She's back. <laughs> go, yeah, ahead. So go ahead. The, the writing is always on the wall, and I, and I can admit to that. The writing is right. always on the wall. And, and, and I think you're you sending do. a really powerful message right now, Yolanda, that when you see the writing on the wall and you see the flags, yes. don't wait. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Don't because wait. Because they, they are there. They are there. But whether you understand what they really are, you dismiss it, or you feel like that person is really not as bad as what you really, what they really, but really, if they show you who they are, believe them. Believe what they show you. And not only that, believe what can, you're seeing, right? Yes, absolutely. Believe what you're seeing because it can turn your life can turn it can change with the one like just like you blink your eye your life can change just that drastic within one blink of an eye and once you go through that a traumatic experience it's hard to bounce back it's it's a bounce back factor but it's hard to bounce back from an abusive situation because those things we look at all those are words and words words will hurt Words is like a sharp edged sword. And once that tongue say those words, you cannot turn that stuff back. You cannot, you know, say re unsay what you have already said. You can't. So if you said that you meant it, if you said that you meant there was a lot of times when he said some really 
degrading things, disrespectful things. And then, I mean, the, the heart wrenching of them literally calling you the B word. That stuff is heart wrenching. That is stuff that it, it, it really emotionally does something to you. Unless you just don't care, you don't have a exactly. heart. Exactly. But if you have a heart and you know that you don't want nobody, you know, disrespecting you like that and calling you out of your name and making you feel like you did something when you know you didn't, that's hard. That's hard to mm -hmm. deal with. So we have to make better choices. We have to be responsible for our own safety. We can't allow yeah. no one to continue to mishandle us. Exactly. And I, I that's a, a huge message right there, you know. Say it again. You you, you need to repeat. <laughs> you have to be responsible for your own safety. We cannot allow people to mishandle us, disrespect us and hurt us because we are responsible how we allow them to treat us. And if you allow somebody to treat you the way they treat you, they will treat you like that every time. But we have to be strong enough to say enough is enough. I don't want this. I don't like this. This does, does not feel good. And if it's an onset, because there is always, like they say, there is always, um, it's, a, it's, it's always, my thought process just left me. There's always a uh, fire. I mean, oh my God, I'm sorry. I can't even I can't even say it because it just left my brain. But uh, everything you, you you go through a lot of times you already see it before it even happens. And exactly. don't dismiss it. Don't overlook it. Don't make it think that you're crazy because that's what they do. They very manipulative and it's both sides. Right. I'm not saying him or her. I'm just saying the abuser manipulation is real. Love bombing is real. The, the uh, trauma bonding is real, mm -hmm. um, emotional, mental, verbal, psychological, financial, and even spiritual abuse. Those are exactly. some of the cycles that you have to be pay attention to. Because a lot of times we we think that, oh, he loved me so much or she loves me so much. She just want me around all the time. No, that is a controlling spirit. That's someone mm -hmm. that's trying to take all of your power away trying to take you away from all your friends family and loved ones yeah you so can't you give your power sure. away right absolutely and, and and i can say i have done that and in the midst of me doing that i realized that i started hating myself i started light hating the fact that i was allowing somebody to just take over my life i couldn't go nowhere you put your clothes on like you can go somewhere where you going I'm going here. No, you're not. You ain't going here. You ain't going there. That right there is crazy for somebody to just take total control over your life. But right. we have to make sure before it even start, don't even let it start. Right. Don't because, allow it. You know, yeah. don't allow it because if it's onset of it even happening, when you think that, oh, we so in love do you really love the person or do you lust the person do you know the difference right so that's why we also always want to please our partners we want to make them feel that they're in control of course we want you to be the man but if you, it's not right like i tell my partner i say you can ask me but you can never tell me what to do because i right. know how to make my own choices and i'll right. make them and i'm respecting you because i'm going to come to you and I'm not going to ask you, is it okay? Because I feel like I'm giving you too much of my power that I'm asking for permission. And right. I don't want to ask for permission. I want you to be able to say, well, you, you know, go and have a good time, enjoy yourself. And when you come home, we'll talk. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. It shouldn't be, oh, where are you going? You can't go here. You can't go there. Oh, don't be with them them young ladies, your friends, because they, they don't mean nothing. You know, trying to downplay it, trying to make it seem like, who you be around is bad people when all the time you the bad person and you just want to keep anybody out of my ear that can you know raise some you know give me some sense and that's what they don't like they don't like no one get close to you so that they can talk any good sense in your head because they want to keep you in a, a situation where they can control your life and and once they can't control you no more they they want to stalk you. They want to start 
fighting you, jumping you, want to, you know, try to kill you. Exactly. And when they some, and, and, and I'm telling you, I, I, you, you, you know, a lot of times we sit down and we try to figure out, man, I've been with this person for so long, I've never seen that side of you before. So all of a right. sudden, we was the best of friends, and now you're trying to kill me. That's right. hard. Yeah. And I, and I try to figure out what's going on in these abusers, what's going on with them. You know, what could be in the minds of these people? What has happened along the way? Where did you get so angry? Right. That's, that's what, what I think, sure you know, the rage in these people. Trauma. Yes. Yes. A lot of it is come stems from your childhood. It and does. And what you have witnessed as a, an, a you know, as a yes. child. And like we always say, these young children, oh, they're so bad. These bad kids. No, it's no. not that they bad. It's what they're watching, what they're That's what they're watching. What that's they're what they're learning. Through. Right, Absolutely. Right. Learn behaviors. So yes, that's why it's, it's important for us to not allow our children to witness abuse. Because learned behaviors is real. Hurt people and not only that, hurt if, people. Yeah, if your kids are watching you take the disrespect and the abuse and the torture and everything else, they that's just, sh that's teaching them the pattern that when they grow yes. up, it's okay for them to they go do, do that. Same thing. Absolutely. They'll be able to either they're going to be an abuser or they're going to be abused. So it's going to yeah. be either one or two ways. They're going to become the aggressor or someone that's going to allow somebody to beat them or do things to them. So that's and they're going to think it's perfectly normal because this is what they saw growing up. So this is yes. for them. It's their normal. Absolutely. So that's why myself, I was asked, Yolanda, why are you going down the cycle of these same type of people? And sometimes you don't know. You don't know because that just was right. normal to me, how you just date people. And, and I realized that every one of the guys that I've dated had some type of abuse. It wasn't all physical abuse, but there was abuse from even if you disrespectful or you right. or you making me feel like I'm not good enough or I'm bel you're belittling me, making me feel like I gotta be walking on eggshells, tiptoeing around you. That's still abuse. Right. You know what I'm saying? If the you, emotional you abuse is gifts, huge. The uh, emotional yes. abuse is huge, huge. Absolutely. And then once you do all that, they do the honeymoon phase. They buy you all these exactly. gifts. Exactly. Tell you how much they love you. You're so beautiful. I'm going to do this and I'm going to charm you and give you everything that you want. And exactly. then once that tension started building up, you like, wait a minute, what happened? Right. I thought we were good. Then all of a yeah. sudden, then the next thing, they want an explosion. They right. want to jump on you. They want to, you know, we used to think that domestic violence was just black eyes and bruises. But right. it's not just black it's not, It goes way it's over. It's a cycle and a pattern of the loops. Yes. Right. It is We're a running out of time because <laughs> we ended up uh, starting a little later because we were having some technical mm -hmm. issues. But um, Yolanda, tell us if people want to read your book, where can they reach your book and where can they get um, like the, where they could they get you for speaking events or anything like that to reach you? What's the number uh, or okay. the website? Okay, well, I have, I am an author and I am a co author, and I uh, start some books that I've uh, right. been a co author of. On these books are uh, on Amazon. One okay. is called um, Gone Girl 31 Day Mask of Devotion. One is, there you go. I'm it's sorry. upside down. There you go. 31 okay, Gone Day Girl. This is Gone Girl. Mask of Devotional. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my insert is Beauty for My Ashes. Okay. And I also have uh, I Am Healed, Hold and Free. Okay. And this one, and I and I wrote in this one as well. And okay. my chapter is, it's called Love, Hurt, and Shattered Dreams. And right. I also just, another book I'm just getting ready to come out, and that is The Book of Ruth. So I will be okay. talking about that, but you can go on my social media handle is Yolanda Carter. I also have a nonprofit organization that I'm going to be um, posting up. You can go on my um, email address and that is, uh, if you want to make donations, it is beautifully scarred at myyahoo.com. 
And if you want to donate, it's a, a nonprofit organization for uh, domestic violence for men, women, and children. And we will be servicing and providing all the services that's that's needed for uh, survivors and victims. So that way they can navigate into uh, living that life, all you know, rebuilding their life and, and starting Absolutely. all over again. So yeah. So. Thank you so oh, much for your it. time today. Mm -hmm. I re I'm really grateful that you were with us sharing your story, your testimony, and of course, sharing all these uh, tips to people, you know, about these uh, relationship situations that do, you know, come up in life, but for us not to ignore the red flags, not to I ignore the signals. Thank you so very much, Yolanda. I'm going to have to close so because we have another program that's going to be starting. So I really appreciate your time today and thank you so much. Hopefully we'll have you again for another part uh, of, of a program, you know, so that we can further talk about uh, whatever future projects you may have. Thank you, Yolanda. Okay. Thank you to our audience. We've been brought live through Radio Dimension Latina FM. And uh, Yolanda's been uh, very generous uh, in, in helping out because this is a huge uh, uh, problem and she's very much involved also with the new bills that will be passed uh, towards domestic yes. violence and really uh, rooting for all these people that have suffered. Trauma recovery <laughs> centers and yes, yes, we need all of that. We yeah. need all of that. So, so thank you very yes. much for all the work that you are doing, you know, to help everybody that has undergone such uh, traumatic events. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Latinos en Chicago y el mundo. Dimensión Latina FM. Solo música buena.